Hi, uh, this is Antilla Quax again. Um, I'm just running this uh, tutorial from my Raspberry Pi. Uh, I'm actually VNC'd into it because I haven't quite got the videoing working on the on the Pi itself, so uh, things will be a little bit sluggish over over the VNC link. Um, I'm just going to write a little program today uh, just to go over some of the basics because I had a comment on the on the YouTube videos that that some things weren't particularly well explained. So I'm going to have a go just. Just, just show some of the very basic things that um, we've been working with. So the first one I'm going to go for is a little, it's a very simple little for loop. Um, and all this is going to do, it's going to say for i in range 10, so it's going to start at 0 and stop when it gets to 10. Uh, and it's going to print looping and the current value of i. So, just run that. So that's just a very simple, straightforward for loop. Um, with the for loop, you can actually change things around a little bit. So, if we want to start, instead of starting at uh, zero, we can we can start at ten if we want to. And um, we can go down to zero, although it'll actually stop at one because zero will be the point at which it exits the loop. So, if I Say that I want the step to be minus one, it'll it'll count downwards. So there you go, looping downwards. Um, I also thought one of the other loops that we've used before is is a while loop. So we just need to do things a little slightly differently for the while loop. So in order to, for the while loop to be satisfied that there is a value of called i, we'll start off by saying i equals 1, then we'll say while i less than 11, again we've got to have the uh, colon there and the indentation, and then because while doesn't automatically do this we need to say i plus equals 1, which is the same thing as saying i equals i plus 1, so if we run that we should get a little while loop going. Okay, so that's working fine. Um, obviously, with the while loop, you can you can go back from uh, ten to zero if you want to. So if I just go while i is greater than zero, if you want to go backwards, I need to be taking one off of i each time. So there we have the loop going down from 10 to 1. So while we've got that little loop there, let's just add something to it. So one of the things that we use quite a lot obviously is conditionals. So what I'm going to say is if i modulus 2 equals 0 equals equals zero. Um, so that just means if it if it's an even number because if we divide it by two and there's no remainder then it must be an even number. So I need to make sure I add my extra indentation there because this is a block that's uh, controlled by that if statement. So if that's the case I'm going to say print i is even. And then I'm going to put in an else statement, so that comes back to the same level of indentation as the if. So hopefully that should tell us whether those numbers are odd or even. Okay, so it's going down through the numbers from 10 to 1 and, and telling us which are odd and which are even. Okay, so those are all quite straightforward. Some of the basic things that we've been doing quite a lot of. Uh, I also thought we'd have a little play with um, the factorial function. So 
this is uh, an example of a recursive function which you might have seen if you've looked at the second uh, tutorial that I did on, on Fibonacci. So first of all we're going to define a factorial function. It's just going to take a number. So as you may know, the factorial of a number is that number divided by all the num sorry, multiplied by all the numbers uh, going down to one. So factorial of three is three times two times one, uh, which is six, uh, and so on. So what we need to do is we need to first of all check if we've got down to one. So if num equals equals one, then we're going to return one because the factorial of one is actually one. Um, else, and this is where we're going to put in the uh, recursive calls to the, to the function itself. We're going to say return um, times factorial num minus one. So that will just ask for a uh, function to be called again, um, and actually it will keep calling it until it gets down to 1 and, and gets something that it can actually work with, and then it will crawl back up through the loop um, doing the multiplication. So in the main part of the function we're just going to put a simple uh, input statement. So I'm going to call this number, call it whatever I like really, I might as well call it um, user num, let's, put it, let's call it that, equals, and I'm not to make sure it's an integer, and I'm just going to simply, whoops, I need to close my second bracket uh, and I'm just going to print out the answer to the uh, to the function it's all right I'm struggling to find an underscore that's it so hopefully that will work. <laughs> no, I have made some mistake, but still. So that pops the prompt. It's asking us for a number. So if I go for something nice and easy first of all. So the factorial of 3 should be 6. OK, that looks pretty good. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to make a little inf uh, infinite loop here. So if I say while true, tr true is always true, and if I just indent these two lines, I should now just keep running the program until I decide to close it. So kind of, uh, so if I just check, so the factorial of one should be one, factorial of four. 24, that's looking good. Okay, factorial of 5, 120. Okay, so as you can see, factorial of the numbers which very quickly get very large, and uh, in the past, um, they were, it was, you know, using that sort of recursive function was, it was a good way of actually uh, calculating them in the early days of computers. So that is just a, a, an example of a recursive function. Um, I think that's all I want to do today. Um, as you can see, it's a little bit laggy when I'm working on the VNC on the Pi itself, so I probably will go back to using uh, my desktop for these tutorials in future. Okay, thanks for watching.